So the next thing we're going to do is exercise 2.8, which is recording some transactions and getting the hang of how this works in a general uh, journal. Okay, so I came over to connect and um, uh, I think I'm in as a student. Yeah, I have a student view here. And you can see the first thing that says is purchased equipment in exchange for cash for $21.50. Okay, so and you can see that that's what they're asking for right down here. So the general led, the general journal basically says, what are we going to record first? Debits, right? So we're going to come over here. We purchased a piece of equipment. So there's my increase and I paid $21.50 for it. Okay, and then it says I paid cash, so now my cash is going to go down, and I, I decrease an asset with a credit, so then I go like that. I'm going to record my entry, and I'm going to move on to the next one. I provided services to customers and received cash of $4,900. So we have to figure out which two accounts. Well, I know cash is one of them, and I provide services to customers, so that means that I've made some money from my customers. And that is otherwise known as a sale or otherwise known as revenue. So if I receive cash, I'm going to increase my assets. Assets get increased with a debit, so that's gonna be the first part of my entry is cash. And I increased it by $4,900. The next part is my revenue let's see what we've got listed down over here there's my service revenue for forty nine hundred dollars now if you recall let me see if i can bring that back up over here i'll do the accounting equation i'll just bring that up right over here so you can see it i know it's not large but here it's a little bit larger you can see that revenues are increased with credit so that's how that one works over here oh someday it's just gonna make so much sense all right and then you record the entry okay and so on and so forth so I'll do one more pay current month current month's rent of fifteen hundred dollars so I'm gonna pay that in cash so if I in, if I decrease my cash that is a debit so that one's not going to be listed first although we could certainly enter that since we've put our social thought process there and how much was it 1500 now what kind of an account is rent well it's not an asset right no definitely paying rent is not an asset it's more of an expense so and again I'm gonna put this over here really quick you can see that expenses are increased with a debit okay so it's good enough we increase it and it's probably called rent expense so let's take a look down over here rent expense and expenses are increased with okay so we're all good 1500 and there we have it okay so I'm not gonna do all these for you but I wanted to kind of get you uh, in the hang of how that's gonna work okay so here are the six steps in doing what we just did which was recording measuring the transaction so we're gonna Use a source document to find out what we did. It could be a sales receipt or invoice, or what have you. Okay, we analyze the impacts of the accounting equation, what things went up, what things went down, increases, decreases. Are they debits or credits? We record them in the journal using our debits and credits. We post them to the general ledger, and we finally prepare a trial balance. Now, trial balance we'll get into a little bit in a little bit, but um, that will just be our way of showing that we equaled our debits and our credits for every transaction and that everything is in balance because we love to balance. And these next slides you can go through are just some more practical examples for you. So um, there's some transactions you can uh, click through and see how they're recorded. <clears throat> and then um, you can see both sides of the equation and how the um, assets are increased and in this case stockholders equity is increased and you can see that they balance because they're each on uh, the opposite sides of the equation so anyway I just encourage you to go through oh and there's the recording of it which is really good because we have one debit and one credit or it could be multiple but it's certainly the case where this transaction balances now the last step we haven't really talked about is posting these individual accounts into the general ledger. So 
what happens here that this is nothing more than taking each part of the transaction and posting the individual entries to individual accounts so said another way anything that affects cash in this case twenty five thousand uh, dollars is recorded in its own special account called cash so this is an, a way for us to keep track of everything that's happened with the account called cash okay and if we move along then we oops, we sorry about we do the same thing with common stock. So you can see that our common stock is its own account and everything happens with everything that happens with that account called common stock will be transferred, not duplicated, but it's already been recorded, but we're just going to keep track of it in a separate account. Okay? All right. And then another transaction is we borrow money from the bank and we promise to repay them. So in this case, this is the second transaction. $10,000 increases our cash. $10,000 we have an increase in notes payable. This is what the transaction recording looks like. And this is us transferring things from the general journal to the general ledger. So you remember that $25,000 before? We'd already recorded that in our account called cash. Now we're just gonna add to that right over here. And because we borrowed money from the bank, we borrowed $10,000, that means our cash went up. So we add that, okay? So I just wanna show you, oh, and then sorry, one more example, notes payable for $10,000. There's an account ledger called notes payable and we just keep track of everything in our notes payable okay so there's some other transactions over here and I just want to you could go through these I'm not gonna take the time to go through them all but that is exactly what that was so now you can just see in another illustrated form what all of these um, are all about so what we just focused on was steps four: recording the transaction in a journal and then posting it to the general ledger Okay, there's our accounting equation again. One transaction I did want to talk about a little bit more was number eight, where we received cash in advance of customers actually getting what they asked for. So uh, I subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, so I pay them $120 at the beginning of the year. Now, this is just a fictitious scenario because I don't, really don't pay them that much. But anyway, let's say I pay them $120 at the beginning of the year so that they'll deliver the Wall Street Journal to me every single day, except Sunday. And so when I write them a check for $120, they really haven't earned that money yet. Would you agree? Because they haven't delivered me any papers. But at the end of January, when they delivered the paper to me every single day, even when it rained, then how much have they earned of that $120? Well, now they've earned 10 of the dollars because I'm assuming that $120 divided by 12 months is equal to $10 a month. So until they make that money, that $120, they're going to put that $120 into an account called unearned revenue. Now that sounds kind of funny, but it's unearned to them. So they've taken in my $120, but they haven't done anything for it. And so it's really a liability to them until at which time I earn that money. So just remember that unearned revenue, sounds like a funny thing, but it's unearned meaning it's a liability because I haven't earned it yet. And that's all there is to that one. And on this busy slide, you can see that there, all of the transactions were listed here. There were 10 examples. Now, I know this isn't lined up very well, but this is kind of difficult to do, so just go with me here. But there were increases in cash, decreases in cash for all these different transactions. Same with accounts receivable, supplies. All these assets were in those 10 transactions that we just uh, went through. And the bottom line is that all of those pluses and minuses equaled $41,200. Then we posted some of those things to liabilities, some to stockholders' equity. We add all those up. You can do it also if you want, and you'll find that that is also $41,200. So everything balanced, all our debits and our credits balance and our assets equal our liabilities plus owner's equity. It's a pretty neat thing. The next slide is uh, a representation of all of the transactions 
that we will have posted in those 10 examples. So there's 10 transactions, so you can see what the debits were and what the credits were. And this was the posting effects. So these were all the things that happened to cash, all the things that happened to accounts receivable, and so on and so forth. And now we're ready to move on and do our own in Connect. So exercise uh, 2-15 is question 11. And you can see that we're now going to post the transactions to the T accounts. So what this is my cash account right here. So I'm going to look down here and try to record everything that happened to cash. So here's $8,200 and that was a debit. So I'm simply going to put my $8,200 here. What else? Then I decreased my cash by $1,100. That would go here. And I decreased it again by $1,700 here and then I increased it by 1200 here okay and then I'll just come up with an ending balance and actually I did something wrong here because I just checked my work so I've got to correct it so it tells me the beginning balance goes here my bad and it says the beginning balance of each count it would be helpful for me to read right okay 1400 and then we record all the other transactions as per normal so my 8200 would have gone here and so on and so forth okay so that's how you do those uh, particular exercises and we finally got that right so we just had to put the beginning balance and then all the things that got added all the things that got subtracted and an ending balance and that is how we accomplish question number 11. So now moving on to the trial balance, it's just a listing of all the accounts on a particular date, usually the end of the year um, or the end of the month, if they do a trial balance on the end of the month. Sorry, that was my cat. All right, uh, and it shows that debits are equal to credits and it just, uh, it just makes sure that things are correct before we move along to the next step, okay? So this is not something that is published to the general public, it's just a matter of us being able to check our work throughout the period of time to make sure that we have everything right. So all the accounts get listed here. They are in order of cash followed by liabilities followed by stockholders equity and then the extension or expansion of those things, meaning there's the common stock retained earnings, the revenues and the expenses. And then we just take all of the transactions and we list out all of the the total of the debits the total of the credits and then do you see down here Woo we balance so life is good and that just means that we get to carry on and this is the best part right here so i hope you have enjoyed this particular presentation thanks for watching